Welcome back. In this video, we're going ahead and talk about a couple of quality of life improvements for operators as they're going through and working in teams. Specifically, I want to talk about being able to lock a callback and add block lists per operator per operation. So the first one is being able to lock a callback. So what does this mean? Have you ever been in an operation where multiple people are trying to leverage the same callback and you keep stomping on each other, undoing each other's progress, messing up each other's commands, it becomes very frustrating. So what you can do is in the UI at the dropdown, there's an option here to lock. So what this does is it locks the callback. You can see it's successfully updated and now this icon has changed. So it was a keyboard, now it's a little user with the padlock. That callback is now locked from other operators tasking it. So since I locked it here as mythic admin, I can still task it. So shell, who am I? Everything goes through fine. If we swap over to Alice though, we come up here and look at this callback. If Alice tries to task it, shell, who am I? You can see automatically callback is locked by another user cannot task. So it's a helpful way to block everybody else from tasking the thing that you're working on. Now, if the if somebody has locked it, only the operation lead can unlock it or the person who locked it can unlock it. So Mythic Admin locked it. So as Alice, you can see here it's locked by Mythic Admin. I cannot unlock it, not authorized to unlock. But Mythic Admin can come over here, locked by Mythic Admin, unlock, perfect. Now if we swap that process where Alice comes over here and locks it, so we can clear this warning, now it's locked by Alice. If we come over here as Mythic Admin, we can see it locked by Alice, but Mythic Admin is the admin of this operation, so they can unlock it. This is one of the instances where being the lead of an operation has extra privileges. If you are designated as the lead, you should be the one that has permissions to always task your own agents. So this is a handy way that you can kind of regain things back in case maybe somebody doesn't respond to a message or they lock it and they kind of leave for the day and you need to do things, you as the lead can unlock it. Now, what maybe you don't wanna full out lock a callback. Maybe you just want to, based on information that you've gotten so far, block certain commands from certain operators. Maybe you have a command that has some sort of, you know, uh, iffy workings that in some instances might not work and you don't trust your operators to know all those ahead of time. You can kind of prevent them from doing it, but still allow yourself to do it. So how does that work? If we come over here into the all operations aspect in global configuration, I am Mythic Admin right now, I'm an operation lead. Any uh, global admin can go through and create these block lists. So what they are is it lists out every command for every agent. You can scroll through and you can toggle which ones are blocked. So let's say this will be no more shells. So we want to block everything that is shell. So in Poseidon, we want to block shell. In Atlas, doesn't have one. In Atfel, we want to block uh, shell and shell elevated. Okay, these are the commands we want to block. All right, we have a name for it. We hit submit. And now we can see here, we have a block list called no more shells, where Poseidon's shell and Atfel shell and shell elevated are blocked. So you have to actually apply this block list to somebody for it to take effect. So we just saw that Alice was able to run shell who am I? If we look over here, uh, now that it's unlocked, shell who am I? So let's come back over here and go to modify our block lists. There's a difference, instead of just modifying the operation, we wanna specifically talk about these kinds of block lists. So I click it, you can see here for each operator, you can see the what block lists are applied. So there's none by default, Let's come over to Alice and say, apply no more shells and hit submit. You can also see up here that uh, in the event log, it'll tell you that updated Alice's disabled command list to no more shells. So you can call these whatever you want to make it a bit more intuitive what it is you're blocking or maybe why you're blocking things. But if we come over here now to Alice who just ran a shell command, now we do shell who am I and we get 
an error, not authorized to execute that command. It's been blocked. But we come back over here as mythic admin and go over here. Mythic admin can still do these things. Shell, oops, if I type shell correctly, shell who am I? And it goes through just fine. So it's a nice way to give more granular um, permissions to specific operators in specific operations. Now, uh, that block list only applies to Alice in this operation. If Alice is part of another operation, she can have the same block list, no block list, different block lists, all these different things as it's per operation specific. Additionally, not only can you change the block list for things, but we can modify the operation and change Alice's mode. So by default, everybody is an operator. You can change the mode to developer, in which case you can see a little bit more granular information on payload types and C2 profiles, specifically to aid with things like scripting, which I'll talk about in another video. Uh, and you're able to delete payload types and C2 profiles. Idea being that as a developer, you might be developing your own agent, so you might have to delete it and reinstall it or do things like that to help with the creation process. The last one here is spectator. So this is kind of a read-only mode. You won't be able to issue comments. You won't be able to talk in the event log. You won't be able to resolve things. You won't be able to uh, download payloads. You won't be able to pretty much do anything in the op operation except query data. So you can look at the operational event feed. So we'll change Alice to a spectator. So now if we look over here, Alice is now a spectator. So she can't issue things. Spectators cannot issue tasking. Okay, well, what if we come over here and, I don't know, uh, look at payload types. Uh, they can see all the information on payload types. They can still see all this sort of information. They can see these sorts of browser scripts. But now, as a spectator, they can't actually edit them. So let's edit this to be like response two, doesn't matter, but they're going to get blocked. They can't modify browser scripts. They can't modify things in the operation. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about things. So even as, as we go through, especially for things like reporting artifacts, they can't delete an artifact accidentally. They can't make modifications, but they're still able to go through and, for example, search and see all the output, see all the things. They're just a spectator. They can see what's going on. So it's a nice way to go through and maybe have an external party come in and view what's going on as maybe side saddling an operation without granting them the ability to really do anything in the operation. And you can even see here as we go through and look at the created payloads, uh, they won't be able to uh, download payloads. Payload spectators cannot download payloads. So there's a lot of things that they're restricted from doing. So it's a nice kind of guardrail setup for side saddling or other operators.